Hey, GovCon Giants family. Hey, listeners out there, if you are new to our channel, this is the podcast where we interview persons from the government, contractors, third-party vendors, resellers, everyone who participates in helping officiate, regulate, make small business contracting possible, and also some of the success stories from, from Fortune 5000 winners to SBA award winners and Washington 100. So again, you're in the right place if you are interested in pursuing contracts with the U.S. federal government. And today's show, this is our episode with Making the Giant, who's being hosted by Maria Martinez, one of our original GovCon EDU students turn podcast host. And in this show today, she actually has a special guest, Mr. James Lee. Mr. James Lee's story is really unique because he did not decide to pursue a sexy, sleek industry such as IT or construction. He did not take the path of saying what buys the most services or where's the most money. As a little special someone inspired him to pursue contracts in, wait for it, laundry services. That's right. Laundry services, yeah, like the dry cleaners. And so his first contract was in Florida, and his next contract, which turned into a multi-year contract, is in California. And the best part about it, the kicker is, he doesn't live in either two states. So stay tuned for this episode and find out how Mr. James Lee was able to take his IT background, yeah, he's an IT professional, and convert that into making his mark as an entrepreneur in the world of federal contracting. Welcome, our next upcoming giant, Mr. James Lee. So today we actually are going to have a very special episode because it's actually someone that got everything from Eric's free information. And we tell everyone, take advantage of all this because you're going to hear his story and you're going to hear how he did it. So today we have Mr. James Lee all the way from Hawaii and his company is Home Away From Home Laundry Services. So today it's special because I get to hear the story at the same time as you guys do. So James, thank you so much for being here. I know the time difference is a lot, but we made it work and that's what matters. So just go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, and I really appreciate um, putting my story out there. So. Basically, I'm James Lee, a little young boy from uh, Washington, D.C. I always had different visions and different uh, thoughts in my head about what I wanted to do as I continued on with my through my journey. Um, but one day something said, hey, what is one of them sustainable uh, markets that's continued no matter what? Mm -hmm. And and I was having a discussion with my younger, younger daughter and I was just doodling on a, a sketch pad. And she was like, that looked like a laundromat. And when she said that, I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> it does look like a laundromat. And so that's when I started doing my research and started saying, hey, there's not dry cleaners or laundromats don't, don't really lose a lot of value. They actually are one of those industries that continue to sustain and continue to move in with the market. And then that's when I started doing more research and um, being military, I was able to talk to a lot of my subordinates and be like, hey, what can help you throughout your, throughout your day or with laundry? Because a lot of them don't like, truth, truth be told, a lot, a lot of people don't like, <laughs> they're they too busy. Um, and so I was like, what if somebody offered you a service to come pick up your laundry and drop them off back to you? And so they was like, if they have access to base, I'm good with that. And so okay. that's basically how everything just hatched and, and, not, and I've been going ever since. All right. So just to go back a little bit more, the first time I actually heard about you was when you sent Eric a DM and that's what I was doing. I was pulling it up. Back in December, I got this forward from Eric, the screenshot. And it was December 6th, the one I got it. And it just says, I just want to say thank you because I stumbled across you on YouTube when I first started out in 2018. Mm -hmm. Your words gave me the confidence to take the leap of faith. And it's, it is safe to say that I have received two DOD contracts since 2018. These contracts have made my life easier for me to prepare for retirement from the military. So I just wanted to say I appreciate the gems that you put out there. Thank you. So yeah. this was back 2018, two years ago. And to a lot of us don't know your story. So let's go back a little bit further than 2018 before this great um, DM came through and your story actually took 
because I tell everyone, we hear these stories and we hear everything that happened. And we're like, oh my God, that is awesome. Da, da, da. But a lot of people forget that to get to that point, a lot has to happen. Yeah. It's not just like, <laughs> I'm going to do this and here it is. I won a contract and now it's over. I get paid. It's over. There's a lot that goes before this. There's a lot that goes during it. And there's a lot that comes after it. So yes. it does take a lot of work. So let's go back a couple years to okay. back where, where did you grow up? So I grew up in Washington, DC. Uh, so like, like I said before, it, that growing up in a city, it's always fast paced. It's a hustle and bustle. You're constantly trying to figure out the next move and just constantly moving. And so that's one thing that I think uh, with me always being on a constant move, I always had different thoughts in my mind about, okay, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this, but I never really stood still long enough to pinpoint my direction. And so I think uh, being in the military, it started helping me. It started focusing me more on, oh man, I have 15 years in the military. What am I going to do after? Did and you so, do the military right after high school? Uh, yes. Okay. So high school, you grew up in DC, went to high school and then joined the military right away. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, it's just, so just starting off that way, it kind of like, whoa, okay, now what's my next move? Mm. <laughs> because I was like, oh, I got 20 years coming up, but I know I can go <laughs> until 24 years, but I'm like, oh man, no, I don't want to be one of those people that's stuck in the military. And then after they get out, they, they shell shock and not know what they want to do. Mm -hmm. after. And so that's the reason I started preparing and started looking at different avenues and then uh, my business mentor, uh, Jesus, he he actually used to do Facebook Lives. And one day he he said, the only person stopping you from achieving is you. And when he said that to me, it kind of like resonated. And it was like, what, what stopped me from going forward with my ideas? And so. And what were you doing in the military? Uh, so uh, I'm currently um, Intel. Um, okay. So, yeah. I'm oh, Intel. so very different from the idea of laundry services. So you're in the military. Were you stationed in DC area? Yes, I was. So I was in the DC area, then now I'm in Hawaii. Um, How long so, have you been in Hawaii? So I, I was actually stationed here once before from 2002 to 2009. Then I went back to uh, the Washington area for a while. And then I just got back here in 2017. Okay, and when you got back in 2017, is that where this idea of you talking to your daughter and this laundry mat came about? <laughs> yes, and that's, that's where everything just sparked. And then from there, that's when I started doing my research. And then after I do, did my research, uh, one of my buddies at work, man, was talking because he had his own business. And that's when he started uh, telling me about cage codes and the Dunn's numbers. And I was like, what is that you speak of? <laughs> Because <laughs> I was just giving them my idea about the, the yeah. laundry mat. All it was, it was a conversation of you and your daughter. Um, yep. She's like, those look easy. That looks, and, and it's true. A lot, I think a lot of people get stuck in. They're like, but I have to find a niche. I have to find. And a lot of people go to, oh, what makes the most money? And people go straight to construction, straight to IT. But you had this idea of something that's never going to stop. Something exactly. so simple that sometimes it takes a kid to bring it up because since we're little one of our shores has been laundry do laundry mm -hmm. and exactly. then we get as as adults and we still it's just one of those things that you're like oh i have to do laundry and then you have to it. fold it <laughs> and then you have to put it away and things like that so it's something so simple that i think we go over it and, and that's what usually happens. It's like you, you see a, such a minute task. You're like, oh, oh, my gosh, I got to do that again. But when we actually look at it from a business standpoint, laundry, <laughs> it's been some nights I've been like, oh, my gosh, like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> but it's just just saying that I can actually get a contract and actually fly out a few days later to make sure everything's set up. That that's the that's the joy I get out of it now. And now it's just more of a competition to myself and me setting goals for myself. So it went from the idea, you talked to your daughter, it sparked that light bulb in your head. Now, there's actually a book that I read to my kid is, what do you do with an idea? Mm -hmm. So 
Now you have this idea. I could see the little book because I could see the guy with the little idea <laughs> and the light bulb. What what was your next step? Now you after your idea, because it's just an idea, it's in your head. And we all know that we have these ideas in our heads. Yeah. But then time goes by and sometimes we don't do anything or we are like we we psych ourselves out. And that's the hard part. We, we are very easy as humans to be like, oh, that's never going to happen. Or that's just mm -hmm. not a great idea after we think about it and we overthink. And so that's that's basically what happened, because I, I did psych myself out at first. But then, like I said, my, my business mentor, Jesus, he would he would have like little Facebook lives and I would always listen to him. And then so when he said that the only person stopping you is you, then it's like that that that, that fire just just lit in me. And then after that, I was having conversations with, with my buddy at work. And mm -hmm. then after he was telling me about the Duns and the cage, that's when I actually started doing my research. What did he do that he knew this? So he has his own IT business. Oh, okay. So, okay. Because I'm like, only a certain set of people know what a Duns <laughs> and a cage code is. Exactly. And so, like I said, God put me in that position for a reason. And then he, when he said that to me, then I was like, okay, he was trying to help me a little bit. But the person that I am, I like to try to do my own research. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing my own research, that's when I stumbled across Eric's videos. That's when and they always so, say, trust but verify. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> once I, st I stumbled across his videos, then I looked at one and then I just looked at another and I just kept on going. And then after that, that's when I started getting my, uh, so when I looked at Eric's first video, then I was like, I think I can do this. And that's when I actually filed for my FEIN, mm -hmm. got my FEIN number in January. And then started the process for Sam's registration, got that in April. And then from there, that's when I started looking at FBO. Back when it was FBO, I started looking on FBO for uh, contracts, but I just didn't know how to pull the trigger yet. And mm. looking at more of Eric's videos, <laughs> it, it helped. And this was all back in 2017, 18. 2018. Yep. So a lot of us, I met Eric around that time. And I know around that time, his YouTube channel was very new. Mm -hmm. so this is like limited content the first videos he had and you were able to take it and apply it to it now did you have a business prior to this one so prior to this uh so we had uh, my, me and my business partner michael we actually started doing like uh food prep and stuff like that okay. prior to leaving here so we used to do like a uh, little semi-pro football games and stuff like that we actually started working on home away from home fine cuisine um, but because I'm in the military, it kind of like it basically I put on hold because I wasn't there to help assist because we, we were fairly small. And so we, it was basically me and him really doing the hustle and bustle. And so that I put that on hold. And so when I started looking at the laundry service, I was like, that can help fund that as well, especially if since that's a volatile market, I was like, this can help with this too. So I was always constantly thinking of how can I keep everything sustained and plus make money on it as well. But you've never done laundry services before oh, no. this idea. Before this idea. Okay. And and people ask us like I don't how. So how did you even think of what to do? Okay, I could start a business. All it does, and I've learned this the hard way because I was like, there's no way I could start a business. They're like, Yeah, you just go online and you file the name and that's all it mm -hmm. is. So you have this idea. How did you how, how so would me, you even think about how to figure it out so for me it was basically learning on the fly because like i said <laughs> I, I was doing a lot of trial and error and I, a lot of my ideas i would talk to friends to see what they thought of it and so like i said with uh with paul he basically helped gear me towards because at first i was like i need a i need a facility i need to do this i need to do okay. that He's like, dude why don't you just try to find a government contract and get your duns and your cage number i was like mm. what is what is duns number what do i need that for and so that's when he, he okay he it. and then that's when i was like okay got you and that's when i started looking like when i first got um finally got my sam's registration i started looking at fbo and i started re just reading some of the solicitations and i was like okay but then after i started reading solicitations i had to try to figure out how to how to price things because like I said, I was new to this market. And so I was like, I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And then so guess who had guess who had a video for it? <laughs> <Mr. Clark. laughs> so Eric had a had a video for it, how to price the market and stuff like that. And so that helped me start gauging the market, especially because the first contract I was working on was the one in Florida. And so I started looking at their prices and started to figure out how to upcharge and stuff like that as well. 
So right now you're looking at contracts in Florida, but you are way at this point in Hawaii again. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that takes a lot of faith and a lot of like, because it's not like we, a, a lot of us want to stick in our areas because mm -hmm. we feel it's our oh. safe zone. It's that's yep. what it is. It's comfortable. It's comfortable, yeah. and, but you just looked at it, and no matter where it was, you knew you, you had to try. And honestly, even with the first contract that I stumbled across, it was so basically I I, I seen the sources sort, and I just sent that sent out my information for the sources sort because I was like, ah, okay, what 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 can hurt? And then so they they responded back to me, and they were like, hey, I'm glad you responded. This is a 24 hour, no, a 48 hour turnaround. And so I was like, uh, oh man. And so we actually went over to my buddy's house for a barbecue. And I had, I brought my computer because I was going back and forth. Ah, should I try it or leave it alone? And so his wife, uh, Lanita, was like, nah, James, just do it. You never know what's going to happen. I was like, you're right, you're right. And I actually was sitting at the barbecue with my computer, just typing up, just making sure everything was good, checked it like three times. And actually, when I turned it in, it was like, I want to say it was like an hour left before I had to have it in. And two days after that, they they sent me an email and was like, hey, Mr. Lee, we need you to send us bank verification documents. I was like, what the world? What's going on? I'm confused. And then so I got my bank to sign the verification document, and then I sent it to them. And then they sent me another form was like, hey, we need this as well. I was like, bro, what's going on? <laughs> And so now I'm confused. I'm like, did I do something wrong? And so I talked to my buddy at work and he was like, Jimmy, I think you, I think you may be close to getting this contract. And I was like, man, I don't know. I'm scared. Like, did I do something wrong? Cause I'm like, they go back and forth with me. And I'm just like, oh man, did I do, what did I do? <laughs> like, because like I said, this is a new environment for me. And like I said, this was my first time really dealing with the government on a business standpoint. And so that's why I was like, I was nervous first off because it's my first time submitting a bid. And then second, they asked me for all this verification. Now I'm like, oh man, did something happen? And so um, then finally they came back and sent me the congratulations um, uh, email and was like, hey, you've been awarded this contract. And it starts in four days. In Florida? <laughs> yes. How did that email feel? Oh man, so when I first got it, it's like I, I just went blank and just speechless because I was like, it was just, it was surreal feeling because I was like, at first I, I had doubt and some angst about it because even when, when I was trying to submit a bid for it, like when I was trying to do my market research, um, some of the, some of the cleaners down in that portion of Florida, they wasn't really too cooperative. And they, they was like, oh, you don't, and one company legit said, hey, you ain't got to worry about that contract. I already been promised this contract. And so that was a little discouraging, especially being new to the field. And so I was like, oh man, well, I'm probably not gonna get it because he already said it's been promised to him. And, but I still have my faith. And Okay, and I was gonna ask what, what kept me. you still trying? Cause a lot of people hear those things. They're like, oh, but how am I gonna beat their prices, their own laundry service? Mm -hmm. And so everything happens for a reason. And, and it's just me staying true to my faith and the Lord kept me pushing through. And not only that, if I'm trying to teach my kids never to quit at anything, I, I, that, I would have been setting a bad example of being a hypocrite. And so that was one of my reasons for pushing. And then not only that, I'm competitive. And, and because <laughs> that person said, oh, it's been promised to me. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, now, I'm, now I'm really coming towards it now. And so that's basically what happened. I saw it as a competition. And okay. You know, it's funny, though. Not funny. But um, today we were having a team meeting. And there's this huge company, this huge organization out there. And they have all the certification, all the money, all the bonding, and they had, they've had they never responded to a source of stuff. They don't know how to. So, and, yes. and, you, and a lot of people look at source of saw and just push them away because we see that it says this is not a contract, this is not an opportunity, there's no budget for it. But you took a source of saw, brand new, responded with something so simple, and then you saw how one thing led to the other. Yep. What's funny is the fact that I got both of my contracts off of Source of Sort. Um, so the first contract I got off the of Source of Sort, then the second one, I, I responded to a Source of Sort for it. And then I actually lost that contract, but because it fell through, 
I was the first person that they emailed <laughs> emailed saying, hey, the contract is back open. Would you still like to go through with your bid? And so I did. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, I had I got, hey, congratulations, home away from home. You've been awarded this contract. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and then it was like, oh, but we need you here in two days to do the walkthrough. OK, <laughs> let's make it happen. <laughs> So the Florida contract was 2018. Yes. It started the sources saw, you then got the emails back and forth. And I've had that where the emails went back and forth. And I was the same way. I'm like, why do they need insurance mm -hmm. and specs? And I don't get this. Or like, can you show us the specs for this? Because we are trying to verify something. And that's when somebody told me, he's like, uh, that's because you're, you're in the run. Yep. I'm like, <laughs> And then you get this wonderful email that you got this contract. How many, we're six, just time-wise right now, we're six hours apart. How many hours in a flight would it take you to, to get to Florida? So, I... Uh, now it, you got the contract, so, what's next? <laughs> so, when I, so and, it's, and it's funny because when I got the contract, I got it, a response on Sunday. On Monday morning, luckily I was up and an email was sent from the COR to the person that actually gave the contract out and was like, hey, this person is in Hawaii. How is it possible they're going to be able to run this contract? Mm -hmm. But like I said, the law works in mysterious ways because I was actually sitting up on my computer at the same time that I got this email. And so at first I was about to respond to the email, but then I just called, I just picked up the phone and called them. And when I actually called them and talked to them, but hey, I'm used to the, that area because of my military service and and it, it basically put them at ease. Um, and like I told them, I have a project manager already on, on ground and we will be there on Tuesday. So right after I got off that phone call, I booked my flight. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, now, now I, I put a timeline to myself now. So now I have to be there. But the thing that helped me is being in the military. I, I knew people in Florida and a good friend of mine who I call, he's my basically my brother, Keith, he was actually stationed uh, basically a mile away from the location. And so I was like, brother, this is what I need from you. I'm like, I'm going to send you the paperwork. I want you to come a part of my company. And he was like, oh, I didn't even know you had a company. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it, it worked fast. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so after that, um, I hired him as my project manager. Um, as, and it's crazy because as I was flying in, I was creating business card templates <laughs> as I was on, on the flight. And I, as soon as I touched down, we stopped past uh, office office depot and actually printed out cards so that as soon as I get there, I can present them with the cards as well. So Because yeah, then it, now you're official. Yep. <laughs> it's the little things that matter. And you say the, you said the Lord works in mysterious ways. But the fact that you had someone and that they were only a mile away and that they were available to just go, that's just like, you couldn't ask for anything else. Hey, like I said, that that it, it it was how can I put it? It was it was a blessing for me to even get the contract, but then it was even a bigger blessing for me to have somebody so close, especially when I was a I'm I w I don't think I was gonna lose the contract, but the COR was like, You in Hawaii, how are you gonna do this? And so that I kind of put him at ease with him knowing that I had somebody already on the ground. How long so, was the contract for? This contract was actually, it was only a, a year contract. It was only supposed to be a year, but it actually went for a year and a half. And so then after that, uh, so I was could have resubmit a bid for that contract, mm -hmm. but the, the second contract that I got on was actually a little bigger and I wanted to concentrate all my attention on that contract. Mm -hmm. And so that's the reason I- What exactly go. is the, if you're able to tell us, what is exactly what you did? Because we hear home away um, laundry services, and we're thinking laundry service, but how can the military need laundry services? Because in our eyes, like somebody has to do their laundry. <laughs> exactly. It's the and government. So for, That's how it operates, right? And so, so one thing with the with laundry service and dry cleaning services, every base has like the main dry cleaning services that they offer to their patrons. That's on the base. Okay. And so what you do is you can go drop your uniforms. You can actually drop your so we didn't close off too and we have to charge them a certain price mm. so for me they actually had separates other than the actual main base they had separates for the blue angels uh laundry 
And so because they was always on a, on a go and they needed to have their uh, flight suits and everything looking good, um, they hired somebody for that. And so that's what I submitted my first bid on. Okay. That is awesome. I know you're in the military, but how cool can you say like, oh, I did stuff with the Blue Angels. Well, and it's kind of funny because when I'm when I'm at work, nobody really knows that I have my own company because I'm at work. Um, and then when I actually start talking to them about it and they'd be like, so how do you how can you do it? You're still full time military. And like I told them, some some nights are sleepless nights, <laughs> uh, and, especially and when you want something. I'm glad you touched on that because we get that asked so many times they're like i'm still military or i'm i have a, a, about a year for retirement like, i work for the government like can i do this and my response is what we've we've told people first go to legal to make sure that it is but what we've heard is that as long as you're not working at the present base or the present agency where you are then it is okay Yes. So and what, what was your risk? What did you did you ask? And what was your response? And so and that's the main reason because the field that I'm working in, that's the main reason I didn't do the field that I'm working in currently, because mm. like I didn't want to have that conflict of interest. And so that's what and then, like I said, when I looked at the market, I knew that laundry services and dry cleaning services is something that's not going away. And so I was like, this can be a good hold off until I start doing my next Wait. my next journey. And so I, I was like, once I retire, then that's when I can actually start doing what I'm doing now. So. Laundry, and I'm still like laundry services. That is so, it's so simple, yet such a great idea at the same time. So far, it's, it's like I said, it's, it, it sounds like it's something so easy and simple, but honestly, like you have to find, especially the way I took it, because I don't have my own physical facility. Mm -hmm. I had to, first off, I got to trust now that the person I'm, that I'm subcontracting and partnering with, that they can, because basically they represent my company now, <laughs> because this contract belongs to me. Mm -hmm. And so if they do something wrong now, it falls on my shoulders. And so what I, what I did was I flew in, I made, first I made preliminary calls. Okay. And even, even the, the guy for the, the uh, guy that I actually chose for my subcontractor, he was like, oh, it's really you. I was because he didn't believe he thought I was a scam because he was like 808 number. I, I thought that was a bill collector or something. And he was like, I didn't think you were flying in here. And so when I actually flew in, it's like then it was like that shock value, like, oh, this guy was for serious. He was for real. And so for that, I think that's what usually happens before me, especially when it comes down to like I like I try to do all of my market research prior. OK, um, before I even touch down, because. I want to know who I need to actually physically go see, mm -hmm. or do I need to make alternate plans to see another person? And so when when I so the same thing I did in Florida, I made calls and finally I found somebody. And then for San Diego, I did the same thing. I, I made preliminary calls, and then when I got down, I did the walkthrough and I went straight to the subcontractor's location and started talking business with them. So the first one was Florida. Then so you came here, you got everything put together. And then you go back home and you just let it flow. Yes. So, so what I, did, so luckily my, like I said, this, this guy, Keith, he, he's like my brother. And so I, it's like, I trust him. I trust him with my babies. And so, you know, I, I knew he wouldn't do nothing to hurt my, hurt the brand or the business. And so what I did was when I was in, in Florida, I was in Florida for about a week and a half to two. And so when I got there, we got all the, the uh, equipment that was needed for them to turn their stuff in. We got all the printing paper. We, we got everything that was going to be needed to run the day-to-day -day operations. And then plus we hired two people while we were there. And so like, so it's not- You're learning easy. business on the go. It, like yeah. you said, it happened quick. And, and it did. And so I, it's like every, every time I learned something, I basically started fine tuning things. Okay. Um, because at first I didn't have an HR company. I was like, oh, maybe I can do that myself. But then I was like, but what about taxes? So I was like, oh, no. I'm, so I, I, I went through ADP and started and hired them. And so I just, it's like everything I was learning, plus I was just fine tuning and I just kept it going. So you were smart about it because there's a lot of us out here that we try to just take it all on. It's like, it, like we, tried to, we, we tried, 
<laughs> we try to be HR. We try to be the sub. We some people we even wash the clothes themselves. They had to. That's how. Like that's the mentality. It's like I have to do it all on my own. And but you took. You were not like that. You knew you could run it. You knew you could find people. You had to set things up, and you have to trust yep. that you picked the right sub. That you picked the right people to make this thing. Like I said, you make it flow. It's yep. not like you just go and, okay, it's good. And it just, no. it's going to happen. It's going to take, like you said, figuring stuff out, trying to make it work. Finding the right people is very important. Yes. And like you said, you were blessed that you had Keith, but it's like, how do you know if the people you're hiring are going to do the job? Because I had subs pull out on me last, after pre-con, after our first walkthrough. And I'm like, like, what do I do? So one thing with me is I, I always, I hope for the best, but I always plan for the worst. Okay. And so one thing with the, the HR company that I went through, we were able to put, put jobs out on Indeed and stuff like that, a part of the, the package that I had. And so I was constantly looking at other things. And then, like I said, I was stationed there once before. So I had other people, family members who was already in line. And like, uh, like I told them, you know what I'm saying? As long as they, they're willing to show up and represent my company, because at the end of the day, that's my name that's mm -hmm. been out there. And, and so I already had them in place just in case somebody else didn't work out. And so that, that was the main thing because I always want to be prepared because I don't, I much rather be prepared than not be prepared. Then I got to fly out real fast again. Yeah. And that's not good. So that one was going on and mm -hmm. you go back to Hawaii. Now what happened? So now I come back here. And so. I started had, had a little more pep in your stuff, a little bit more confidence. Things, little, you know what? I got, I got, I got a contract. <laughs> Everything's going fine. I set it all to go. Now, where is it now? What happens next? So after that, that's when it's like so. Because I'm a football coach as well. So like I told tell all my kids, you got that 24 to 48 hour rule. Uh, you enjoy it, but then now it's time to get back on your grind and get back to work. Mm. And so. That's when I basically started getting back on FBO and started looking at more solicitations, trying to figure out, okay, how is this going to help benefit my company? Now that I have this income coming in, but I also have payroll, I got to pay the subcontractor. I got to make sure it's going to stay feasible for me moving forward. And so that's when I, I was like, hmm, I want another small contract, but let's just try my hand with a medium to a large size contract just What's, to see what. What was small to you? Uh, small to me was what, uh, 35, 35 to 70,000. Okay. So, uh, yeah. That, that was your was first small. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to try for a little bit bigger. Yeah. And, and so, and like I said, uh, so I got a few no's, um, but with me getting those no's, it, it kept me hungrier because I was like, Hey, okay. They, they, but they responded back to me now. And so that was, that was the positive piece on it. And then plus I was learning what I was doing wrong with when I was bidding on those contracts. And so how as were I was you learning, learning, how were you able to catch what you were, what the mistakes were? So I started looking at exactly what was the price being the price point that they were, they were getting their bids at. And then I still, and I started looking at how I was bidding and I was like, okay, maybe I need to fine tune this because when you actually see what was, what was awarded for, they're not going to tell you particulars. And so I just had to look at, okay, what I already knew about the contract and what I had to do. Okay. And so that's when I started fine tuning my numbers. Okay. And that's a, a lot of people ask that is how do I, how do I fine tune it now? Because a lot of people say, give them no, and they forget about it and they just go on to the next thing. Like you can't do the same thing and expect something different. So yeah. it's like, how do you, that's why I asked, how do you find those mistakes? How do you make something, those changes that are needed to be made? So uh, I know one thing that I really do, I, I usually look at historical data of if somebody else had that contract first, I look at what was it awarded before and what is it awarded now? Normally you give like a 10 to $15,000 upswing depending on how okay. long the contract was. And so that's, that's one thing that I was looking at and mm -hmm. one thing that I was noticing. And so with me noticing that now, and I was like, okay, now I need to figure out, okay, now how can I adjust my numbers per item? And that's what was helping me throughout this process. Okay. So the no's were not a bad thing. I know. No, just... it just wasn't my time yet. It, it, it wasn't. 
because like I said, I was fairly just just got got off the ground with that first contract. And I was basically already starting to try to find another one. And so it just wasn't wasn't ready yet. So. Okay. How and then you kept looking. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was still looking. And then like I said, I was responding to sources so all throughout this process, like, um, truthfully, I was sending out emails for contracts, I want to say I was sending at least 20, like close to 20 a month. Because I was just just hungry. I was just moving. Just why did you do the source of thought? Because what was the, the thought process behind it? I don't, I don't know if it was Eric or somebody else I was following. They were saying that once you put your your business name out there, a lot of companies actually hold on to that and actually, I'm not gonna say they give you preference, but they show that you're more dedicated than the others. Yeah. And so that's the reason I started doing it. And Eric and Eric just um he said this today, actually, he's like, um, when we're in our meeting, he goes, a lot of people don't understand. It's like the source is not, it's not really for you to get the contract they're advertising. You, mm -hmm. most of the time you get a whole different one, but yes. at least you're marketing your company. You're letting them know you exist. Yep. And that's the biggest thing. Government's not going to come find you. Oh no. Because too many, too many <laughs> other companies out there. They're not going to come find you. You have to tell them, this is who I am. This is what I could do. And this is how I can help you. Yep. At the end of the day, that's all they care about. Someone that, show, like you said, shows that interest and shows that they, they put a little bit of extra work. And that's yep. just a company that shows that it's someone I could rely on that's going to get the job done. Because that's yep. what they want. They want someone that gets the job done. Just dependable. And that's and as long as you can be dependable for them, they, they're going to hire you every day of the day every time mm -hmm. so, yeah and so after that so after going back and forth it was december december january january of 2019 i sent a source of sort for the base in san diego and then that's when they released the solicitation around two weeks after that and so i did the solicitation and everything i was like okay maybe maybe this is a good one and so <laughs> When I did that, then I lost out on that one, and so I was like, "Oh man, but it's okay because I, to me, I, I have a goal. I had a goal. I want to have at least one contract a year um, prior to me retiring, and so I was like, okay, it's still early in the year, so I'm still okay. And so I lost that one. At least I thought I lost that one, but then two weeks later, the COR sent me an email. It was like, "Hey, are you still interested in this?" The, uh, the the contractor, the vendor, it fell through. And so now we're putting it back out. Because they so had I'm, awarded it. Like you lost it because it has been awarded. Yes. It was awarded already, given away. I was like, okay, <laughs> next, put you in my archive. Now it's time for me to turn my sights to something else. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I was and doing. How did you feel? Was it an email or a phone call? What, how, did, how did you feel when that so phone call email came through? When it came through, I was like, somebody playing a joke on me <laughs> that, that's basically what i thought because i'm like like i said i'm still fairly new i'm only six months into this government contracting game and so when that happened i was like hold wait, on wait wait hold on because you said you're six months into it how, so I, how, I got my first yeah contract was, you know where i was going september 2018 and then i got my second one april october no uh, March, no, wait, Sep you, first one was September 2018. When did you finish your SAM registration and you're done? I, fin I finished that April of 2018. <laughs> May, June, July, August, five months, one first contract. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> because you actually took the steps. People are here five years later and th they're waiting. They're waiting. It's like, yeah. okay. But but five months and you are on your first contract and then a few months later, the second one comes in and you thought you lost and then this magical email appears <laughs> and yeah. so, so you're like where's the there's the camera someone has to be punking me here. exactly and that's why I was like man sh should I respond is this real and so finally mm -hmm. I I responded to her and then she actually called me. And so I and I, I was talking to her and I was like, "Is this legit?" And then so she started going over uh, some <laughs> some stuff about the contract and was like, "Hey, but you got to make sure you have somebody on site um, throughout the operational day." She, she started breaking stuff down to me and I was like, "Is this saying that I got this contract?" Like as we was talking, I was like, 
is this like hold on she's like well i'm gonna after i get off the phone with you i'm gonna send you a few more emails i need you to sign it and send it back to me okay she was like but are you sure you understand that you got to have people on site i was like okay and so i went back i read back through the whole solicitation and then that's when i was like oh they actually gave me a building <laughs> so they gave me a building they, they gave me everything basically a storefront um to run the dry cleaners for them and so i was like oh wow okay and then so that's when i was like i stopped that's when i started going through my process my roller decks who do i know in san diego <laughs> california hold on let me find some people because the, the military net is very wide and so i was like i know people and then so as soon as, as soon as i got off the phone and started looking i started talking to people and luckily found some somebody to be my project manager first it was like hey we gotta you know so once they actually she actually sent me the congratulations and was like hey but i need to see you in two days so we can do a walkthrough <laughs> and this was monday evening and i was like two days i'm in the military i gotta uh, that, I gotta, it's not I like you just approved. pick up and go right exactly i was like i gotta get, get it approved and everything but so my command team they 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 knew about what i was doing and okay. so I, I told him, I was like, hey, I just got this contract and this is what it's for. And they was like, oh man, that's awesome. Da, 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 See, what you need that's, from us? That's great. <laughs> they was like, what you need from us? And I, and I told him, and I was like, yeah, I just need to, right now, and I'm, I'm just going off of what happened last time. So I need around two, and a, two to two and a half weeks. And they was like, no problem. You got to leave. So go ahead, just submit it. <laughs> and so that's what happened. So after I got it approved, I booked my flight the next day and i flew in and and i can't make this up i literally flew in got off the plane picked up my rental car drove straight to the meeting as i met my project manager we went into the meeting together <laughs> yeah. like hi nice to meet you let's go it's, but that it, it happened that way i wish it didn't happen that way but it, i was on crunch time we had to make it happen <laughs> so yeah oh wow and they, the thing is, people wait. It's like, no, I have to have, and and I think we we operate this way in life too. It's like, I have no, you have to wait for the right time. I have to have all my dots in order. I have to have a building. I have to have this. I have to have that. But I don't. And then we we're like, but I don't have this. And if we wait and wait yep. and wait till we feel we are ready and everything is perfectly aligned. By then, it's like opportunities have been missed. Um, yep. You're broke because to get everything in order. And and now San Diego offered you a building because yes. earlier you said, I don't even have a facility. Yep. Well, the militaries, <laughs> what did your friend tell you? Oh, why don't you do a government contract? They'll give you everything you need. Exactly. But I didn't, I didn't, all the other solicitations that I was reading, they didn't, uh, a facility didn't come with it. And so this was the only, this was the one that was unique because they actually gave you a facility, but on with them wanting you giving you the facility, they want you to have somebody there as well. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay, I just have to hire somebody full time. Not, not, yeah, so now you need a full time person going. Let me, let me try to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> and so honestly, with with the San Diego location, it actually took me a more than it took me longer to actually find somebody to actually fill that um, position. But truthfully, like, and right now, Miss Barbara, she she has been she has been a godsend for me because now she's actually my project manager. So I, I actually promoted her to the project manager because she she's been since she came on and then she stumbled across my lap because we were we were there and then so my project manager he was like, yeah, I think he my buddy said he knows somebody that's looking for a job and and so he, so he called his friend that she was looking for a job but then her mom was looking for a job and come to find out that was miss barbara and so miss barbara was like well i'm not doing much i want her to concentrate on school and so she was like i don't mind doing it and i explained to her what her duties was she met us for lunch and then after that i was like so when can you start and so she was like i'm as soon as you need me. and so ever since then miss barbara's been she's been with us since may of 2019 and we've been moving ever since and she's project manager for us now and this contract is a five-year contract so yeah i was gonna ask if it's still ongoing because you say okay. she's still she's still a project manager and everything this is a five-year contract so I, oh that that's a nice email to get yep like do you still want this like huh who's playing a <laughs> trick on me who, 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 for five years are you like 
Exactly. And that's, that's what it was shocking because first off, I, I, I saw how long it was and then I saw the price and I was like, hold on. This Did is... you meet your medium sized goal there? Oh, I, 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 I met that and plus some, because like I said, at, at the end of the day, my last contract was fairly small. And then when I got awarded this one, I was like, that is huge. Like, wow. Like you're set for five years, five years. And like you said, it's finding the right people and Mm -hmm. they keep it going. And if everyone's happy at every end, then. And and so far it's been a blessing because like I said, um, everything, everybody that's been coming with the San Diego locations, it's been, like I said, they've been a godsend, especially Ms. Barbara. She, like I said, she's been doing so good and been promoting the brand so well. It's like, I had the promoter to, to, cause I don't, I'm not, I don't want to lose her. Like she, she's a, like I told her, we're not just a part of the business. You're my family now, like, Aww. because you're doing so many different aspects of the business and you're acting on as well for me, since I'm not there, you're mm-hmm. actually doing everything. Granted, I respond to a lot of the emails that they send over, but she's, she's the she's face the of the face. business. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. She's the one that greets people and they, put a smile on their face every time they come in and leave that facility that that's what they need yeah paperwork is very important i'm not gonna lie if they don't have paperwork <laughs> nothing's gonna run but if you're on site then that's a that's a whole different aspect of it you're yep. dealing with two di- very distinct parts of business yep. and businesses are not easy to yep. run as you say you were learning on the go and look at you now you went from an idea to full-time people hr payroll company benefits taxes yeah yes and like i said it's best it's it's basically been a a whirlwind because everything happened i'm not gonna say it happened so fast but it it literally happened fast it literally happened i had 48 hours to respond to this email and i got it (laughs) and i got that that contract i flew out got it everything squared away then five and a half months later I'm on another contract. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I running these two locations? And so it sometimes it 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 everything got, came back in perspective and like, hey, slow down. Mm-hmm. Now start reevaluating things and redefining okay. the path now. And so now that I was on those two contracts, now I'm, I was trying to figure out, okay, so what's next for me? Because I, I for me, I never want to stay stagnant. I always want to think moving forward, what's next? And so like like i told you this the laundry service was only it was like a, a bridge to me getting to the next journey part of my journey mm-hmm. um because I'm, I'm about to retire and so with that being said that's when i was started looking into how can i get the it stuff off the biz off the ground and stuff like that too okay. and so that's currently what i'm so i actually got a few niches right now so i just i just started uh changed my nyx codes and i just started my uh, when do you service. retire october like this October? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. And so I got the uh, janitorial uh, nights codes and I started actually submitting bids for uh, contracts for uh, janitorial stuff now too. So I'm, I'm, I am I'm want to make sure that I have, because I can't sit, sit still. Um, that's one, one of my <laughs> oldest things. Like, that's that's, that's why he rest. went into the military, because you yeah. couldn't sit still. No. And so it's like I always got to constantly keep moving mm-hmm. and keep redefining myself um, because... I, w- I want to make sure that I'm showing my kids that no matter what they're doing, you always never give up on anything and always keep pushing um, because guess what? Money never sleeps. And granted, you have to take a rest or a nap, but <laughs> you, you got to keep moving too. And never ne- never let somebody telling you no define you moving forward. And that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. And, and that's very, very important because I have I tell people, you have to go into this with a why. Like, yes, we need money. Yes, we're not doing it for charity. Um, Yes, there's times that you don't get, like, especially me, when when my parents, when I quit teaching and I came home with, like, GC books, my mother thought I lost it. Mm. Like, she's like, what are, or when I stayed home and I worked, she's like, what are you doing? Why are you on the computer all day? And things Mm -hmm. like that, like, people, and I always tell people you always have to remember the the why why are you staying up why are you going through all these meetings why are you learning why and if you lose sight of your why then a lot of things could happen you could either give up or you could let the greed and the money take over 
having that why is very very important and and i agree with you totally um and that's that's i think that's what's been my biggest push for me um because in fact although i work a full-time job in the military i still wanted to show my kids that if you wanted to achieve something you can still achieve that and plus keep doing what you're doing and i wanted to let them know that hey me being in the military it's allowing me to be able to I, how can I put it? I, I want to say it, it allows me to push towards this this new journey because I still know I have sustained income, and a lot of people don't have that that extra income to be able to go through and try to figure out their way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, one thing I can say is that the military allowed me to be able to do that. Um, but if you have a plan, just continue to keep pushing forward and and try to figure out and tailor your plan to what your means are, and don't let your dream be like, okay, I'm gonna keep putting it off. I'm gonna put it off. I'm gonna put it off because you do that too many times. You're never going to do it. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, don't, don't be your own, own killer. <laughs> it's true. No, no, it's definitely true. Does, how does your daughter feel about the laundry service now? So it, how, it's, it's, how's it's her funny. idea now? So my baby, she, she always asks me, daddy, can I go to San Diego with you? Daddy, I want to go. I want to go. Where's my shirt? So <laughs> So it is funny. So I'm, I'm wind up making her a shirt and take her to San Diego uh, one of these days. But with COVID happening, uh, that kind of threw a monkey wrench in a lot of different things. And even even with the San Diego location, we actually lost two people um, just because they didn't feel safe anymore. And so that so when COVID happened, it, it threw a monkey wrench in everything. And I was I was like, oh man, how I'm gonna keep this going? How I'm gonna keep this going? But like I said, prayer and faith works. And I, and so far, we've been still moving. We actually hired two, two additional people. And so it worked. It was bad, but then it worked, worked out. And so mm -hmm. I stressed a little bit. But at the end of the day, the Lord still got us through. And we're still, we're still being successful now. Um, but I definitely do promise I, I got to take my daughter out of San Diego. <laughs> so how old is she me. now? She's seven now. Oh, she's seven? So mm -hmm. how old was she when she had this idea about laundry machine? She was, she was four and a half, five. Yeah, my baby, she, she's, she's one of them. She's going to do big things. She is. So right now we have her in coding classes and stuff like that now, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to get her, her mind moving because like she, she's, she's a sharp little girl. So yes. Keep her moving as well. So she takes after her father. <laughs> And trying to keep busy <laughs> and trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I can say that. Yep, I, I, I always got to keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> so. What's the next idea? What can I do now? Like, what? How can I make it better? Because I, I, I hate sitting still because I, I need to. I need to know that I'm constantly working at perfect. Not necessarily perfecting because nothing's gonna be perfect. But I want to keep fine tuning everything that I'm mm -hmm. doing. If I'm not fine tuning this, okay, I want to fine tune my coaching. I want to fine tune my mentoring. I want to, I want to keep consistently fine tune something because not only that, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a blessing to others now because now I can share my story. Um, because like, especially with the military folks, like I let them know that you can be successful and run a business and still be active in the military because so many of them feel like, oh, I can't do it because of my schedule. No, you can do it. It, it all depends on what you want to do mm -hmm. and how you want to do it. Um, because I'm, I'm a prime example. And, and like when I actually shared to them that I, I own a business, they like, what? How? And that's when I break it down to them. Some days I wake up at two o'clock in the morning because things happen on the East Coast. So because of that, I, then after that, I take a nap and then get ready for work. <laughs> but you, you still have to, you have to know your why and why you're doing it because some days it's going to be a thankless job. But at the end of the day, as long as you're moving and have everything successful, hey you can just sit back and all i got to do today is click on approve the payroll and that's it is san diego the only project currently going so currently yes um san diego is the only one that i have going right now um but i am i just submitted two additional solicitations one last weekend then one yesterday actually and those are pretty those are pretty big contracts um those are bigger than the san diego contracts so <laughs> And like I was joking with my buddy at work, I was like, if I get one of those, I think I'm going to be okay right now to push for a facility because the one yesterday was a $2.4 million contract. And so if I get that, then I'm going to go out to my facility after that. What state is this one in? Because This one's don't... actually in Hawaii. Okay. It's actually here. And so that's why I'm like, hey, it, hey, if it's meant to be- There I'll... shouldn't be that much competition. It's, it's a few bigger competitors. 
And so that's that's the only issue that I have because, like I said, I'm fairly new to the game and it's bigger competitors here. And so, but I'm gonna I'm gonna battle no matter what. Oh I'm yeah, gonna, you have the past performance. So, you know how they want their paperwork done, exactly. and, and that is a lot, especially for contracting officers. They see that if you've worked in, in, in federal contracts in the past. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me once, she's like, "Oh my god, thank you for making this so easy for me." And that's why I thought I wasn't gonna be able to get the first contract because I was like. I don't have anything <laughs> you know, like I, I literally only thing I had my, was my letterhead and past performance and nothing significant uh, so far. <laughs> and that's all I had. And so I was like, I'm not going to get no contracts off this, but they took, they went out on a limb and I got the contract and then now I got that contract and I got the second contract. So now I have past performance history now. Oh yes. So, For a one year and a five year. Yep. And right now those two are janitorial. Now that so, you're so those two are laundry services. Now I'm going for the janitorial ones, but the, the one that I submitted. So basically I'm submitting both janitorial and laundry service. Okay. Account. And then inch towards base operations. That's <laughs> so I'm actually looking into that already. I'm on my I am. <laughs> so yeah. Because if, if you're able to do the laundry, then the janitorial comes in, then that's a, one aspect of space services and facility management. So then you learn something new and then you add that on to what your services you're able to offer. And that's how you grow little by little. And so that's what I'm looking at too. And that's what I'm, I'm starting to look at the 8A certification as well, because I know um, looking at some of those base operation uh, contracts, they actually want you to have your 8A certification. Mm -hmm. And so that's the only thing that actually made me start looking into it because I was like, oh, they asked for this. Hold on. Why do I need? OK, now I'm going to start looking into it. This uh, maybe I can get it and, and start submitting for it. And the, the important thing is that you know how things work. You're yeah. not just going out and getting 8 eight just because somebody told you to. Now the contracts you're looking at are asking for it mm -hmm. and you know how things work. So for you, it's going to be you're going to hit the ground running as soon as you get 8 eight. And yeah. that's the most important thing. You're not wasting any time. Yep. <laughs> are you going to stick to that side of things after retirement in October, or are you just going to jump shit? Oh, no. So, <laughs> are you going to so, keep them going, though? Or are yes, you just going to so, give away home away laundry services? Oh, no. So this that's my plan. My plan is to continue moving. Um, okay. Basically, continue as long as I can continue get, keep them getting contracts for these, I'm going to keep going. And then, plus, I want to start my new niche. Um, with actually, okay. So, okay. Um, so, no, that's that's the plan because like I said, it's still it's still benefiting me. So I'm not gonna stop it. Like that's that makes no sense. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna keep pushing pushing forward. Are you gonna stay in Hawaii after October? Oh yes. I I, I love this rock. This is this is my this place. rock. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> this place has showed me so much love and then not only that, just the blessings that, that has happened here. And so I'm 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 definitely happy here. Um, okay. Because it, the pace slowed down for me and it allowed me to be able to be more so for my family and then plus just seeing things a lot clearer. So. Oh, that's awesome. I mm -hmm. imagine the air in Hawaii is a lot cleaner and allows you to reflect and yes. breathe a little bit more than just here being in the, able to walk in out the mainland. My backyard and see, see the beach and just see the ocean. <laughs> just like that to me, that's, that, that does a lot for me. And like I said, I lived in DC my whole life and now it's just like, I saw the fast pace. Now I'm trying to slow it down. Granted, mm -hmm. if I get a contract in DC, I'm gonna fly to DC just to take care of the contract, but I'm not staying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. Yeah, or even Florida and San Diego, those are all major cities that we're just going and going and going a thousand miles a minute. And at the end of the day, we don't achieve much, but you are there. You could sit outside, work on whatever you need to work on, and go back to breathing and relaxing and you're getting more and the thing is you'll get more done like that than what we will do being on this hamster wheel of a city life i agree i agree, so, <laughs> I agree. what was has been the biggest lesson so far i think the biggest lesson for me has been uh just not ex just not letting somebody say no to you and that deter deter you from your mission um, because like I said, I, I, I received several different no's. I, I want to say over 15 no's, um, but at the end of the day, I didn't let it define me and stop me. Um, because like you said, I knew my why, my, and my why was 
showing my kids that no matter what happens, you can continue to persevere through it. And I think once you actually get that and define your why, it's going to be a lot easier for you to move forward and keep pushing. Um, being that you didn't start off as a business entrepreneur mindset and you just got through yourself into having a business of your own, what is the... Mm-hmm. I don't want to say the lesson you've learned, but what is an advice you give to somebody that's starting their business from just the ground? So I, I say when you first start in your business, make sure you do your research, um, because I think that that's one thing that kind of helped me a little bit because I had people in my corner. Like like I said, my business mentor, he was giving f- free Facebook classes. And then after that, then my uh, buddy at work, Paul, he actually planted a seed for me and talking to me about the Duns and the page code. And then from there, that's when I was able to go and do my own research. And then, like I said, I stumbled across Eric's uh, videos from there. And so my biggest thing is just go through and do your research. And once you do your research, make sure you have all your ducks in a row before you actually take that leap. And then don't be don't be afraid to make that leap of faith because either you're going to fall or you're going to learn. And so <laughs> I looked at it as if I fell on my face, I'm going to learn from it and keep it moving from there and just add another tool to my tool bag of life lessons yeah and it's true and and we know that running a business is not easy you're no. doing it while being full-time active in the military and you make the time so you have to find the time i think yeah and i, and I think you know, like like i tell some of my soldiers it's like you you're going to always make time for what's what's good for you and when you make time for it that's that shows that you're you're committed to it and once you actually commit to something, especially something that has your name on it, you, you, you're fully pot committed now. You, you have to go forward because if it falls down your name, now your name's going to be down the drain if you let it falter. And, and who knows when you're going to get another contract because, oh, now the government don't want to work for you no more. <laughs> so you, you, you got to be smart about it. And so that's my biggest thing is not tarnishing my name and making sure I put my best foot forward at all times. And I think with me having that mindset, I think that's what's helping me continue to move forward. Uh, especially with getting several other contracts and hopefully the Lord continue to bless me with more contracts and keep moving from there. What do you suggest people to do that want to learn all everything that you do? So honestly, I say first you, you write down all the questions that you think you want to know. And then after you figure out those questions that you think you want to know, and then you just start researching it. And once you start researching, guess what? You all, more, more questions are going to pop up. And then find that 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 good business mentor that can help help guide you. Um, because, like I said, I've been I've been blessed with having a business mentor that was in the military with me at one point in time. <laughs> and so, with me listening to his Facebook lives, and then having a, a good buddy at work that had his own business and everything that whoever went through the process with the SAMS registration and the cage codes and stuff like that, that helped mentor me as well. And so that's why now it's like I try to become that mentor to other entrepreneurs because some fact. I want you to know what I didn't know because instead of me having to search and do all this stuff, it, it helped me having other people in my corner. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when I, cause I didn't know nothing about business credit. I didn't know nothing about cage code. I didn't know nothing about Sam's registration, but because I started researching and everything like that, that's when it helped me. And like I said, just hearing the videos that Eric had, and then now it, it's like, everything's out there now for you on YouTube. And so now you can definitely pick up a lot of gems. And then, like I said, I follow Eric and that's the main reason I reached out to him. Just something. Thank you. Because I feel like a lot of times people do things, but we never really tell them truly thank you. And that's why I really appreciate everything he put out there. Because like I said, that content was free. I know he has the Gov Giants and everything. And I know that he has other classes, but just those free jewels was able to help jumpstart me mm-hmm. to where I am now. And I definitely appreciate it. Yeah, and we tell people, use all the resources you have mm-hmm. and take advantage of the people around you. Because if, like you said, they're going to the, be having a mentor is huge it because is. then you don't have to stumble. You don't have to say, make the same mistakes. You don't have to spend so much time trying to figure stuff out if they already know the answers. But yep. you said, trust and ver- but verify, make sure that what they're telling you is the truth because people are humans and sometimes... Uh, 
So you just have to <laughs> exactly. fall, get whatever you can from a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and to put it all together and having that strong mentality of that you could do it. And if that's what you want, a little bit of hard work, a little bit of nightless sleeves and trying to make it work and it's going to happen, but you just got to persevere through it. And that's the biggest thing. Just, just to finding your why and just persevering through all the hardships, because like I said, it's, you're going to hit that, you're going to hit that brick wall, but at, at the end of the day, don't let that brick, you hitting that brick wall stop you. Um, because at the end of the day, you can climb over it. You can go around it. There's so many different ways you can do it, but that's why having a good mentor can help you guide you through it too. And even if you don't have a mentor, it's people on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that, there's that, people that, everywhere that, that, right now with covid you're fine yes. there's many outlets there people are out there but you, you got to be careful though because there's a lot of people out there that scammers and stuff like that so you got to make sure that when you're listening to it like you said trust but verify you gotta you gotta listen to it because one, for some reason when i got registered in sam i got so many people sending me emails mm -hmm. like, what the world like and then and it's funny now because now they send me e emails oh well, i can help you get government contracts um, I'm doing that on my own, um, but okay, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to charge you this such and such amount. Mm, nah, it's okay. It's free for me, for me doing myself. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it happens. And I'm just like, wow, like it sucks, but everybody has their niche. And so I'm just not willing to spend that money for that niche. Exactly. Especially knowing that you could do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I'm so excited to have heard your story because it's thank you crazy to hear that people are out there actually doing it and yeah. that you're actually successful at it and five months into it you got your first one and it was just some a source of thought that people yep. just go past and they don't stop to think of what could happen mm -hmm. and also the that there's so much more coming out of you it's not like you just got one contract and you're fine you kept it going and uh -huh. you're you reach for the bigger Okay, I got that a little bit bigger now, and a little <laughs> bit bigger now, and 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 your attitude towards it, it's like it's a competition, it's a challenge, it's like my why and things like that. It's, it's what a lot of people need. A lot of people, just like how you said, Eric and your mentors were that for you. I think your story is gonna resonate on some people that are gonna take that little idea yeah. of a four and a half year old. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to think, sometimes the best ideas come from the littlest the kid. people. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, my baby, me sitting there doodling with her, I, I would have never thought that, that that was our business idea that was coming out of it. Me just drawing stuff. And she, daddy, that looked like a laundromat. Oh, really? It does. <laughs> and, and and it just grew from there. And so it, it and it's just funny because it's like, when I, when I tell people that story, they're like, your daughter? I was like, yeah, and I still have the picture. <laughs> And I still kept the picture too. You because should. Be. I, I, that yeah. would have made my business card with that little picture. Make that the background. Make that the background, the outline, and then. I might just do that because, <laughs> like I said, that, like I said, it, that was a blessing because, like I said, that idea wasn't really there until she actually said that's what it looked like, and I was like, "You might be right." And that's when I started looking at and the market. And then it just started growing and growing that is an awesome story and i'm a kindergarten teacher so i appreciate oh. my five-year-olds <laughs> yes they, they they shock you in every every different way every day <laughs> yes they're and, and it, it takes that naive simple mind sometimes to make sense of a lot of things that as adults we just overthink and we're overwhelmed exactly. and everything else. so much <laughs> interesting oh yes oh but thank you again any yep. final words to everybody out there? What do you need from mm -hmm. us? How can we help you? What can you give? How If someone wants to contact you, trying to work together, are you open for those things? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm always open. And um, so basically they can contact me from on my email, james.lee at hafhls.com. Or they can give me a call. They can go on my website, actually. Uh, the website's up, um, Home Away From Home Laundry Services. Um, you can Google that and it and it pops up for you. Um, my contact information is on there. Currently, we don't have a physical facility, but we do have, we're willing to work with anybody. Um, so I think for me, what I would tell people that's out there that's thinking about jumping out there, just jump. Because at the end of the day, the Lord's, it, Lord's not gonna let you fail. He, he's gonna, he's either gonna teach you and or he's gonna keep you moving, um, but he's never gonna let you fail. Um, the only person that's gonna fail you is you. 
um, because you're not willing to take that, that leap of faith. And don't be afraid to jump out there with those sources sort because those sources sort, like I said, I benefited not once, but twice off of sources sort. And that's just because in fact, I heard somebody say, hey, just do it. You know what I'm saying? You never know. It's not going to hurt you and never know what other business that they can bring to you. And Eric is so right because that's what happened. Like my name is there with them now because of the social sort that I put out there. And because I was working with them the first time, they kept me in mind the second time. <laughs> and so little things like that, it goes a long way, especially in this government uh, game. And especially if you, if you provide a good service the first time, they're going to keep you in mind. And so just stay, just stay humble and keep persevering through all the hard times because you're, you're going to see more hard times than you're going to see the good. Um, so just keep keep going through it um, because, like I said, I saw 30 no's before I saw two yeses, but that didn't I, I didn't let that stop me because I knew my why and what I was trying to teach my kids. All right, James, thank yes. you so much for coming on here and sharing your story with all of us. It is I truly appreciate everything. I definitely appreciate the invite. Like I said, um, it's, it's definitely a blessing to be able to share with everybody. And I'm definitely glad you guys gave me the um, opportunity because um, everything you guys are doing, it's going it's to help somebody. And I think a lot of people need to hear the little the little person's story, basically. <laughs> yeah. And the, and we are what's going to, like, you're, you're inching towards the next podcast. You'll be on the Eric side next time. So... Whew. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Big boys, I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. All right.